This episode explains the origin of the blood ancestors. It starts with a story Abraham's grandmother told him when he was a child. There was once a nobleman named Sardu who suffered from gigantism. The bones in his body were bent out of shape and he had to walk with a cane. The cane he held is now the Sardu sword that Abraham carries. Although Sardu looks like an otherness, he was very kind to the villagers. His brother was heartbroken at the sight of his ill brother. Legend had it that there was the blood of a great gray wolf in the forest that could cure Sardu's condition, so his brother formed a hunting team and ventured into the forest. While resting in place, they suddenly came across a strange creature, thinking it was the gray wolf. His brother and the others chased after it, and left Sardu where he was. However, a long time passed and his brother and the others did not return. Sardu followed their footprints and discovered his comrades' bodies near a cave entrance. He then ventured into the cave. Inside the cave, Sardu found that the creature before him was not the gray wolf they sought. This monster was feasting on his brother's blood. Upon seeing Sardu, the monster attacked him. Sardu was thrown by the monster to the side of a coffin, and then the monster pinned him down. The monster expressed its admiration for Sardu's massive body. The monster picked up a handful of soil filled with infected nematodes and fed it to Sardu. Afterward, the monster lost its life and fell to the ground, while Sardu successfully inherited its vampire powers. A week later, Sardu returned to the village and locked himself inside his house, never appearing during the day, only at night. From that point on, children in the village started to go missing one by one. Although it was a story told by his grandmother, it was indeed a real occurrence. Abraham's back at the place where we rounded up the blood ancestor yesterday. He chased after the blood ancestor along the route he took to escape at that time, hoping to find some clues to continue hunting them down. At that moment, Vaughn suddenly appeared in front of him. Before Abraham could react, he was quickly subdued by two vampire warriors. Soon Abraham was brought before the patriarch. During their conversation, Abraham learned that there were a total of seven patriarch. Abraham chased to kill down the seventh oldest blood ancestor, and the originals are the most powerful of all vampires. They also had some connection with each other. Abraham's heavy hit on the blood ancestor yesterday was seen by the rest of the six patriarchs. They hope that can work together to deal with the blood ancestor. Abraham asked if there was a way to completely kill the Strigoi. The patriarch didn't say anything when they heard it. After all, they had the same weakness as the blood ancestor. Abraham remembered a book that documented how to eliminate the vampires. The book is called Falling Light. Patriarchs hearing this, the ancients became extremely angry and asked Abraham how much he knew about the contents of the book. Although Abraham was aware of the existence of the book, he had no knowledge of its contents. The patriarchs then started whispering and Abraham asked Vaughn what they were talking about. Vaughn said they were discussing whether or not to kill him. After their discussion, the patriarchs decided to spare him but asked him to contact them if he found any trace of Abraham agreed to their request. And the patriarch began to slowly awaken. They then gave Vaughn the order to feed. At Vaughn's command, a man was brought forth and bound in front of the three patriarch. Under Abraham's shocked gaze, the patriarchs began to feed around the men. On the other side, F and Nora arrived at the CDC, intending to bring back some items for experimentation. Strangely, there was not a single staff member present. Suddenly, a bloods rushed out. F immediately retaliated upon seeing this. Nora swiftly drew her gun and shot the bloods on the spot. Another bloods prepared to attack, but thankfully F noticed and saved Nora's life. On the other side, Palmer and Eichhorst arrived at an abandoned factory in the suburbs. They're going to buy this place as the Blood Ancestors' lair. Then Marchand, who they were talking to about working with, came on the scene. After a conversation, Palmer eventually purchased the place for $20 million. Palmer wanted to offer her triple the salary to join his company. Without hesitation, Marchand accepted Palmer's high salary offer. F. They're trying to come up with a vaccine to inhibit the bloods. Only by breaking the infection chain would their chances of winning increase. While discussing, Vasily and Dutch came down from upstairs. They hadn't seen Abraham for a day, so Vasily decided to go out and search for him. At that moment, there was a knock on the door. Vasily opened it and found Abraham had returned. He was still immersed in the horrifying scene and hadn't recovered yet. Later, 
Vasily found Abraham in the room. Abraham mentioned the next mission, he kept a lot of equipment against the bloods in one of the warehouses, just to deal with this kind of situation today. Abraham had a premonition that another major battle would soon begin. On the other side, Zack was playing with throwing knives alone in his room, frightening F when he saw it. It turned out that Zack refused to believe that his mother had turned into a bloods. F felt extremely guilty upon hearing this and could only comfort Zack's emotions. However, Zack now only wanted to see his mother as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the principal of the blind school announced that they were relocating to the outskirts. Soon, they arrived at their destination by school bus, only to be greeted by Eichhorst. The next day, Eichhorst went to the blood's lair and awakened Kelly. The blood ancestor has restored Kelly's sanity, intending for her to become one of his generals. Then, Eichhorst brought Kelly to the factory, where there was a large pit filled with dirt. Eichhorst mentioned that inside, a new type of bloods was being nurtured. The blood ancestors call them feelers. Kelly's job is to nurture them. Kelly, as the blood ancestor's right-hand woman, will specialize in nurturing and screening feelers. If she encounters individuals who do not meet the requirements, Kelly will break their necks on the spot. On the other side, Abraham led a few people to a warehouse. He had stored many weapons there to fight against the bloods. Soon, they found the place where the weapons were stored. Strangely, the rolling shutter door was not locked. Abraham distinctly remembered that he personally locked the warehouse. So, everyone took out their weapons and prepared for battle. However, upon opening the door, they found an elderly couple hiding inside the warehouse. After questioning, they learned that the couple lived upstairs and had sought refuge here to escape the bloods. After resolving the misunderstanding, everyone started moving the equipment to fight against the bloods. But at that moment, the lights suddenly went off. When F turned the lights back on, they were already surrounded by bloods. F immediately began to fight back upon seeing this. However, the sound of gunfire attracted more bloods, forcing them to fight and retreat at the same time. After F and the others escaped, they encountered even more bloods outside. Unfortunately, they ran out of pistol bullets. F and the others had no choice but to draw their silver swords and face the bloods head on. However, a vampire managed to sneak attack the elderly couple from behind due to their negligence. By the time Nora noticed, it was already too late. After beheading the remaining bloods, Nora took out the ultraviolet lamp. The elderly couple had already been invaded by the nematodes. Upon seeing this, Vasily directly drew his gun to kill them, but F stopped him, because these two people could serve as their research subjects. Inside the Manhattan City Hall, the governor and some legislators were discussing the recent virus outbreak. They had also encountered these creatures one after another. Justine was curious about where the military had gone, and the governor was also puzzled. At this moment, the minister spoke, saying that they had dispatched 1,000 doctors and set up quarantine stations on various streets detaining anyone who might be infected. Justine was puzzled by this. The spread of these creatures was extremely fast, and they had to be killed to prevent further spread. Then, the two engaged in a heated argument. Eventually Justine stops bickering, and she's off to Staten Island to build up defenses to stop more people from getting infected. On the other side, F brought the infected elderly couple to the laboratory. By now, their bodies were filled with nematodes, and F explained everything to them. The couple became angry after hearing this, and decided to leave. F did not stop them, as they feared infecting their son after turning into monsters. The couple panicked and decided to stay as subjects for F's experiments. The experiment began, and F took some blood samples from the couple for research. After dropping the blood into a petri dish, within a few seconds, all the bacteria were instantly killed. This was something currently impossible in the medical field indicating that creating a vaccine would be very challenging. Soon, the woman began to feel unwell. Upon seeing this, F had no choice but to administer a sedative to her. The husband, witnessing his wife's suffering, pleaded with F to end her suffering. However, F did not want to do so. He first comforted the man and then deceived him onto the operating table. Immediately after, he tied the man up. For the sake of all humanity, F was willing to bear the burden of infamy to successfully develop a cure. On the other side, Vasily and Dutch arrived at an apartment building. Their plan was to clear the bloods from nearby buildings in order to establish a defensive line. As soon as they entered, a strong smell of blood hit them. 
blood splatters were everywhere on the walls. The two followed the blood trail to the restroom, where Vasily found the resting bloods. So, the two of them began discussing their plan. They split up and took separate actions, Vasily hid behind the bloods. While Dutch created noise to attract the vampire's attention, the bloods woke up one after another, they slowly approached Dutch. Just as the bloods were about to get close, Dutch took out a hand grenade and threw it. In the next second, silver shards fell on the bloods, causing them to lose their fighting ability due to the burning sensation. Dutch immediately drew her silver sword and killed them. Vasily rushed out from the entrance and began to encircle the bloods. After finishing their task, the two of them arrived by the swimming pool, discussing which neighborhood to clear the vampires from next. Vasily was extremely familiar with every building in the city. While Vasily was speaking, Dutch had already undressed and entered the pool. Then, Dutch invited Vasily to swim together, but Vasily declined Dutch's invitation. After a few more invitations from Dutch, Vasily took off her clothes and got in the pool. Then, the two of them began to play in the water, and the atmosphere became ambiguous. On the other side, Nora found Abraham and told him that the elderly couple was about to transform into bloods, because Abraham said the ancestor could see through the eyes of the blood. Therefore, Nora was worried that their location would be exposed after the couple transformed into bloods. Abraham reassured Nora that there was nothing to worry about. Since the couple had been in the trunk when they came back, they didn't know where this place was so their location wouldn't be revealed. Once Nora confirmed the safety of the situation, she quickly returned to the laboratory and encountered an angry F. F had tried dozens of methods but couldn't break the virus. Nora had no choice but to take matters into her own hands. She found a breakthrough, a leucine nutritional defector that destroys amino acids in the human body. If applied to bloods, their amino acids would be destroyed, causing the bacteria inside them to starve to death. They immediately started the experiment and, with great effort, finally succeeded in developing it. Indeed, leucine is really eating up the cells of the strigoi. Every day, F would feed them with blood, and then he injected the developed antidote into the blood's bodies. The next moment, the raging bloods unexpectedly calmed down gradually. As Nora and F were preparing to celebrate, suddenly the bloods began to convulse violently, and then there was no movement. Then F looked at the pustules on blood's neck. Ah! Ah! The failure of the antidote experiment caused F to break down again. Nora immediately comforted him upon seeing this. Kelly returned home and took out the clothes Zack had worn before. Throwing them on the ground, the feelers gathered around and began to sniff the scent on the clothes. Then Kelly ordered the feelers to find her son at all costs. Meanwhile, Abraham was by the river when a blood suddenly emerged from behind him. Abraham sees this and immediately pulls out a silver nail gun to fight back. Abraham takes the silver sword and cuts off Blood's head. Abraham pulled a small bottle out of his pocket, then used a spoon to scoop the nematodes from Blood's body into the bottle. Soon, Abraham returned home and put the captured nematodes into a beaker. Immediately after that he boiled the water, cooking the nematodes alive. Abraham timed it and then poured the boiled nematodes water into a small bottle. After it cooled down, Abraham dripped it into his own eyes. On the other side, F didn't see Zack in the house. He asked around. But no one had seen him, which made F feel uneasy. Zack's clothes and boots were also missing. Everyone immediately ran out to search for him. Luckily, F found Zack on a bus and quickly went to stop it. It was only after questioning that the ticket agent realized that the two men were father and son. She rushed Zack out of the car. F then asked Zack where he wanted to go. Zack wanted to find Kelly. Upon hearing that Zack wanted to find his ex-wife, F softened. On the other side, Nora noticed that Abraham hadn't left the house for a long time. She came to knock on the door to inquire about the situation, but there was no response from inside. Nora saw Abraham lying on the ground through the crack and immediately broke in. Upon examination, Abraham's pulse was very weak. Nora quickly performed artificial respiration on him. Luckily, Nora's timely discovery saved Abraham. Then Nora helped him up and asked what had happened, but Abraham insisted that there was nothing wrong with him, which Nora naturally didn't believe. No matter how much Nora questioned him, Abraham refused to speak. When Nora returned to the room again, Abraham had already regained his composure. Nora saw this and started pressing him on what he'd done. Seeing Nora's firm attitude, Abraham had no choice but to confess the truth. He was already in his 90s now, and in order to continue hunting the blood ancestors, he extracted the essence of the nematodes and dripped it into his eyes. This way, he could prolong his life. He knew that he might go to hell because of this. 
but he was willing to do anything to kill the blood ancestors. Gabe, with an extremely eerie makeup, caught the attention of the police. The police then pulled out their guns and asked Gabe to cooperate with the inspection. When they opened his backpack, they found a lot of soil inside, which left the police baffled. After getting a clear look at Gabe's face, the police recognized him as a singer. They then prepared to examine the soil in the backpack. Gabe intervened and warned them that they would regret touching it. The police didn't take it seriously and directly grabbed a handful of soil. The next moment, nematodes from the soil crawled into the police officer's hand, frightening him. Another officer quickly approached to check, and Gabe took the opportunity to kick him. Just as Gabe turned his head to run away, his wig was pulled off unexpectedly, so Gabe reached out to Stinger and started to fight back. The police drew their guns and shot at Gabe. Gabe leans back and starts calling out to the nearby Blood Humble. In the next moment, a group of blood surrounded the police officers. One officer quickly hid in the police car and called for backup from headquarters but was pulled up by Gabe. <laughs> On the other side, Gus was undergoing training to kill Bloods. Just as he killed one, another one appeared. Gus aimed and prepared to shoot, but his gun was out of bullets. Vaughn instructed Gus to engage the Bloods in close combat. Gus obediently approached, ready to confront the Bloods head-on. Bloods meet spikes can't even hit him. However, Vaughn was dissatisfied with Gus's defensive approach and advised him not to rely solely on defense. Gus found the Bloods' weakness and then subdued him on the ground. He exerted all his strength to pull out the blood stinger. Vaughn was pleased with what he saw and gave Gus his first mission to kidnap Palmer. Gus was startled by the task. On the other side, Fitzwilliam left the Stoneheart group and took a cruise to Staten Island. As soon as Fitzwilliam arrived at the port, he had to undergo a series of checks. Thanks to Justine's efforts, this safe, uninfected island was established. Stoneheart group, Eichhorst brought Gabe here. The purpose of this visit was to ensure Palmer's safety. So the master specifically sent Gabe. Palmer doesn't want to see it. It's obvious that the blood ancestor sent Gabe to spy on him. However, Eichhorst was firm in his attitude, leaving Palmer with no choice but to reluctantly agree. On another side, F locked Zack in the laboratory to prevent him from wandering around. But when Zack learned that F had killed a vampire, he started to cause havoc in the lab. F was furious and dragged Zack out. He then brought him in front of a Bloods, wanting Zack to see the reality. He explained that Kelly had turned into such a monster, and they would mercilessly drain his blood. Nora quickly intervened to stop F's actions, but F did everything for the sake of his son. This Bloods is about to die because he injected a cure. He now carries a virus that can kill Bloods. And the next step is to experiment with its contagiousness. So F decides to release him at night. If successful, he will spread like a plague to other Bloods. On the other hand, Gus disguises himself as a maintenance worker and successfully infiltrates the Stoneheart building using a fake identity. Vaughn leads the vampire warriors in action from the back door. By this time, Gus has successfully entered the elevator. Suddenly, the elevator shakes violently, and Gus starts his move. He knocks down the security personnel and covers the camera with spray paint. After finishing, Gus presses the top floor button. At this point the vampire warriors were all hanging below the elevator as they followed it up to the top floor. The security department sees the elevator heading to the top floor and senses trouble, so they immediately find Palmer and take him to a safe room. Soon, the elevator reaches the top floor, and Gus opens the bottom of the elevator, pulling Vaughn and the others up one by one. After everyone prepares their equipment, they open the elevator doors, but Palmer is nowhere to be found. While the group is searching around, Palmer activates a defense system. In the next second, ultraviolet lights appear overhead burned a member of the team on the spot. Seeing this, Vaughn shoots at the ultraviolet lights, but this thing is bulletproof. Then the ultraviolet lights surround the vampire warriors. <laughs> Gus wants to save them, but Vaughn tells him to run. After hearing this, Gus quickly leaves the Stoneheart building. In an underground fighting arena, Two wrestlers are engaged in a life-or-death duel. The one wearing a white headgear is the Silver Angel. During the fight, the Silver Angel overpowers his opponent and removes his mask. Unexpectedly, a vampire is revealed beneath the mask. Seeing this, the Silver Angel attacks him with a silver cross. The vampire instantly transforms into a bat and escapes from the arena. The Silver Angel quickly follows. He follows the footprints and arrives at the vampire's castle. As a result, he is ambushed by the vampire. 
resulting in a permanent disability in his right leg. Angel silently turns off the TV. He is the silver angel from the movie. Due to a broken leg during filming, he had to work at a restaurant. F and the others are preparing to send this dying bloods back to Lair to spread the virus to other bloods. Soon, Vasily drove to a nearby subway station. With the tacit cooperation of the crowd, the bloods managed to be thrown out of the car. But what surprises everyone is that this bloods does not head towards the subway station. So the group immediately follows him, only to find that he arrives at a mental hospital. While the group is chatting and laughing, a group of bloods surrounds them from behind. Seeing this, the group immediately starts fighting and quickly kills them. Then F and the others enter the mental hospital and discover the bloods lair. All they have to do now is wait for the bloods to spread the virus to other companions. After returning home, the group saw an exciting news. Councilman Justine went on TV and announced a citywide curfew and that peacekeepers would be sent door to door to clean up the mutated monsters. This is the best news Vasily and the others have heard during this time. On the other hand, Gus escaped from the Stoneheart building and returned home. His brother was lying on the floor emitting a strong odor. As Gus started packing his things, his mother suddenly walked out of the room. Although his mother had turned into a bloods, Gus couldn't bring himself to harm her, but she no longer had any human consciousness. And upon seeing Gus, his mother immediately attacked. Fortunately, Gus reacted quickly and managed to evade the attack. Despite his mother's aggressive behavior, Gus couldn't bear to harm her. He called out, hoping his mother would recognize him. But in the next second, the blood ancestor suddenly took control of her body. You failed. I know who you are. The ancients are the past. I am the future. Guess what? I'm not fighting for the ancients. I'm not fighting for nobody but myself. Cowardice. Ignorance. I said both as you ferried my coffin across the bridge into this city. After the vampire finished speaking, it launched another attack on Gus. But Gus didn't want to kill his mother, so he could only lock her up in the apartment again. On the other side, F found Zack and expressed his deep apologies for what happened to Kelly. Father and son began to have a calm conversation. After F's words, the two temporarily put aside their differences. Then F took Zack to the baseball field. Zack's favorite sport. F thought that spending more time together would help Zack forget about Kelly. But while playing ball, Zack remembered his mother. And that moment was his happiest. In the end, Zack left sadly. Dutch found Abraham and discovered that Fitzwilliam, who was with Palmer before, was missing. Previously, Fitzwilliam spared her and Vasily's lives when they were caught in the Stoneheart building. After some investigation, she found out that Fitzwilliam had a brother who worked as a firefighter on Staten Island, so they can go get Fitzwilliam on board to fight the Blood Ancestor. Abraham thought it was a good idea and went to Staten Island with Dutch. Soon, they found Fitzwilliam's brother's house based on the address, and Fitzwilliam was indeed hiding there. Dutch persuaded Fitzwilliam to join them in saving the city. But Fitzwilliam insisted that even if Palmer did bad things, he would not betray him. Seeing Fitzwilliam's firm stance, Abraham left a business card for him to consider. On the other side, Palmer gathered bosses from various industries. He's come up with a bailout plan and reopened the doors of the stock market with everyone's collective effort. With the support of the richest person, everyone agreed to this proposal. After the meeting, the bosses walked out of the Stoneheart building. Journalists were already stationed at the entrance, reporting the news to everyone. However, suddenly, a group of bloods rushed out and started attacking people frantically, plunging the scene into panic. At that moment, Palmer was in his car, observing everything. They seemed to be plotting some kind of plan again. On the other side, F and his companions arrived at the psychiatric hospital, but the bloods carrying the virus had already disappeared, so they quickly ran out to search for them. F found the body of a strigoi near one of the cages. He showed symptoms of being infected with the virus. To verify the virus's contagiousness, F continued searching for other bloods. In the next moment, F discovered that the bloods were all gathering on the rooftop. And then they began jumping off in a suicide-like manner. Look out! Vasily, in order to stop the Strigoi, prepares to blow up the subway tunnel. Just as Vasily starts to retreat, a peacekeeping unit suddenly enters the subway and begins to move towards the explosion site. For their safety, Vasily called out to them. Afterwards, the group starts questioning Vasily about why is the curfew still out there? to lead them away from the blast range. 
Vasily begins to provoke as he retreats. Soon, Vasily is subdued by the group and arrested on charges of terrorism. On the other side, feelers trained by Kelly discover Zack's trail. This is exactly where F and Zack played together yesterday. Back at home, F starts discussing the plan to eradicate the Strigoi with Nora, in order to spread the virus on a large scale. F is preparing to go to Washington. He has good connections there with friends who can help contact manufacturing plants or the military. And when you're done, bring them the virus to make a weapon, making it much easier to eliminate the Strigoi. Before that, F goes to the black market. He is currently wanted and needs to obtain a fake ID first. After that, the hacker suggests that F change his appearance. Upon returning home, F directly shaves his hair off. He then puts the virus into an urn to pass through security checks. Subsequently, F arrives at the train station and successfully deceives the security with his fake ID. In this way, F embarks on the journey to Washington. As night falls, a group of heavily armed special police enter a residential building. Their mission is to clear the building of hidden Strigoi. The train special police easily deal with the Strigoi. However, when they reach the last floor, one special police officer discovers a little girl alone at home. But when he puts down her gun, an accident occurs. He teammate immediately opens fire upon seeing this, and the feelers directly take cover. Then the teammate immediately calls for backup. When he was done, he helped the wounded out. Another team of special police also arrives to provide support at this time. The two of them are shooting at feelers. Meanwhile, the injured special police officer reaches the staircase and unexpectedly gets ambushed by another feeler. One of the team members is knocked down the stairs. At this moment, another special police officer rushes over upon hearing the noise and drives the feelers away. In this operation, one special police officer dies and another is injured. The injured special police officer's eyes have turned red. Unaware that he has been infected, Justine set up a quarantine point and started isolating individuals who appeared to be infected. However, people were strongly resistant to this and expressed their desire to go home. This left Justine feeling helpless. But at that moment, Nora and Dutch arrived. They came to secure Vasily's release on bail. So, the two of them found Justine and suggested a method to quickly identify the infected individuals. But before that, they needed to release Vasily. That's how Vasily was successfully brought out of the detention center. Afterwards, Nora began assisting Justine in testing for infections. The first two individuals showed no signs of infection. However, when it came to the last person, they discovered wriggling nematode all over his body. Through these actions, Justine greatly admired Nora's professionalism. She hoped that Nora could examine her nephew. Subsequently, the two of them entered a ward, where Nora used a UV lamp to examine the patient. They found out that he was already infected. Upon seeing this, Justine hoped that Nora could save her nephew, but Nora expressed her apologies. She explained to Justine that there was no cure for this type of virus. Justine, upon hearing this, instantly broke down and sadly left the ward. Abraham went to the black market and found cream in order to find the falling light. They could find anything as long as the price was right. So, Abraham presented a Patek Philippe watch. Upon seeing such a generous reward, Krim agreed to help. That night, when Abraham returned, he noticed a mysterious figure in black following him. When the figure removed their disguise, Abraham realized it was Fitzwilliam. He's here to help the exorcism team. The next day, the special police invited Vasily to join the mission of clearing out the Strigoi. Vasily never hesitated when it came to eradicating Strigoi. Soon after, the group entered a residential building and quickly discovered a large number of Strigoi. To demonstrate the Strigoi weakness, Vasily pulled out a silver nail gun. Afterwards, the group entered a residence and found no one inside after inspecting it. Just then, Vasily heard a noise coming from the bathroom. The three of them cautiously entered and found no trace of Strigoi there. That's when Vasily noticed that the ventilation duct had been opened, leading him to conclude that the Strigoi were hiding inside. Suddenly, there was a commotion from within the wall. Vasily then found a good spot and then stuck the rebar straight in. Despite stabbing multiple times, Vasily still didn't hit the target. So, he used the steel rod to pry open a small opening and carefully looked inside. After clearing out the strigoi in the house, the group gathered in the hallway. 
Vasily firmly believed that there were still many Strigoi hiding in the building. He pried open the elevator doors and shone a light down, discovering Strigoi resting there. Dutch took out a silver bomb and dropped it. Quinlan, upon learning of Vaughn's death, sought out the Elder and began to blame the originals for their inaction, since the last century, they have allowed the blood ancestors to roam freely, leading to the current uncontrollable situation, when he was out there, he sensed that the blood ancestor had been seriously injured, therefore, he would now go all out to hunt down the wounded blood ancestor, F ran into Barnes, his former leader, on the train, in order to avoid exposing his identity, F engaged in a fight with him directly, after knocking Barnes unconscious, F approached the train door, he wanted to jump off to evade pursuit, but the train was moving too fast, even if he jumped, he would either die or be severely injured, while F was hesitating, Barnes woke up and chased after him, the two of them immediately started fighting again, accidentally, F threw Barnes out of the train, and F panicked and locked the train door immediately, on the other side, Gus, who had nowhere else to go, arrived at a restaurant near his home, Angel was very annoyed with Gus, but the boss's daughter was friendly towards him. Just then, the boss walked over and asked his daughter to deliver a takeout order. Knowing that there were Strigoi everywhere outside, Gus offered to accompany her. Upon hearing this, Angel also wanted to go along to prevent Gus from having any ulterior motives. Subsequently, the three of them went to the delivery location together. After finishing their task, as they were about to leave, a Strigoi suddenly appeared. Gus took out a silver axe and attacked it. After suppressing the Strigoi, Gus killed it with a single shot. But at that moment, another Strigoi came from behind. Angel immediately pounced on it and pinned it against the wall. Gus quickly dealt with it with an axe. Due to intense activity, Angel's old injury resurfaced. So, Gus and the others quickly helped him out of the building. Fitzwilliam joins the exorcism squad and begins to explain to the group what Palmer did. In a short period of time, Palmer had bought seven factories in the suburbs. Whenever Eichhorst came, Palmer would let him go out. So he didn't know the purpose of these factories. But one thing was certain. These factories must have some issues. So, after discussing, they decided to investigate further. On the other hand, F arrived in Washington. As soon as he got off the train, he immediately found his friend Rob. F then showed him his research results. And Rob asked how he could help. F said he needed to contact Chemerol, a pharmaceutical company and have them produce a counteragent using the virus, then take it to the Department of Defense and spread it around. Upon hearing this, Rob said he knew a good friend of Camerol. Quickly, Rob arranged a meeting, and Lee is a secretary at a pharmaceutical company. F immediately presented his report. Although F's virus data was perfect, Lee said they would still need to wait some more time before mass production could begin, but F wanted to develop the medicine as soon as possible, so he did not hesitate to sell his body. At night, Lee told F that the pharmaceutical factory would mass-produce this reagent within 72 hours. Then F went to the Ross house, preparing to tell him the good news. But when he arrived in the room, he found Rob lying in a pool of blood. Shortly after, an assassin walked out. After comparing F's photo, the assassin killed the Lee. After dealing with the assassin, F picked up his phone. On the phone, he found the logo of Stoneheart Group. It seems that his plan has been discovered by the Blood Ancestor. A hand reached out from the coffin, and the Blood Ancestor has been resting here for a month. After the last battle with Abraham, his body is now severely damaged. A new body is urgently needed to transfer the soul. Today is the day he is going to change bodies, and Eichhorst is very excited to see this. He knelt in front of the Blood Ancestor ready to receive his infinite power. Then Eichhorst slowly closes his eyes, but he waited for a long time, and the blood ancestor showed no sign of movement. Confused, Eichhorst opens his eyes and finds Gabe standing in front of the blood ancestor. The master has chosen Gabe as his new body. Eichhorst is saddened by all of this. He devoted himself to the blood ancestor, only to transfer the great power to someone else in the end, but now he can't do anything to stop it. He can only watch as the Blood Ancestor transfers his soul into Gabe's body. Master. After the ritual is completed, the Blood Ancestor collapses. At this moment, 
The blood ancestor soul is gradually taking over Gabe's body. In a few seconds, the blood ancestor adapts to this new body. Then toward Ikorst he said, Ikorst, prove to me no matter what form I take you shall serve me. Near, do his mind is summon his kin. Deliver them for our insight. To sound insane. Forever, master. On the other side, Nora finishes her work at the quarantine station and prepares to go home. Justine specially assigns a police officer to escort her, but while driving, they suddenly hit something. The police officer immediately gets out of the car to check and finds a child lying in front of the car. Next thing you know, he's getting his neck snapped by one of the feelers. It turns out to be Kelly who has arrived. The feelers begin attacking the police car, and Nora tells Zack to run to the church. Kelly takes out a handgun and shoots at the feelers. While the feelers are running away, Nora rushes to open the car door for Zack to run toward the church. In the end, Nora and Zack successfully hide inside the church and use an iron rod to block the door. Abraham is explaining the weaknesses of the Strigoi to Fitzwilliam when the phone suddenly rings. It's Nora asking for help. So the exorcism team set out to rescue Nora. After hanging up the phone, Nora quickly runs upstairs with Zack. Kelly is blocked at the entrance gate, so she controls the feelers to climb up. Nora sees the scene and quickly takes Zack into the house to hide. The feelers have already broken through the window and opened the door to let Kelly in. With the help of the feelers, Kelly quickly finds this room. In the wardrobe, only found the scarf Zack was carrying, which made Kelly extremely angry. At this moment, Nora and Zack are hiding in the church. Kelly, accompanied by the feelers, has already arrived at the church. Just as the two are about to be discovered, the vampire hunting team appears in time. They directly attack the feelers, causing them to scatter around. And finally the group manages to reunite safely. One feeler launches a surprise attack, and Nora misses her shot. But luckily Fitzwilliam manages to finish it off in time. However, he didn't pay attention and got bitten on the leg by the feeler. Abraham immediately beheads the feeler upon seeing this. Kelly still wants to take Zack away, but she is driven away by Vasily's gunfire. Fitzwilliam, realizing that he has been infected beyond hope, asks Abraham to kill him. After giving his last words, Abraham himself beheaded Fitzwilliam. Quinlan was born in ancient Rome. Quinlan possesses only half of human bloodline because his mother was infected by the master while she was pregnant. He doesn't have nematodes in his body, so he can freely move in sunlight. Due to his extremely peculiar appearance, he has been constantly hunted by humans. As a last resort, he came to the arena, where none of his opponents survived for more than three minutes in front of him. It's not I who wants this outcome. Your own kind demands it. Humans love watching him fight. With the protection of the nobles, Quinlan managed to establish himself in the human world. After Vasily and Dutch became intimate, Dutch went home to get some things. Concerned for her safety, Vasily accompanied her. Strangely, Dutch couldn't open the door with her key, as if it was locked from the inside. Vasily forcefully broke in and behind the curtain, they discovered a woman. Dutch immediately recognized her as Nikki, the one who had left Dutch behind at the gas station. Seeing Nikki in such a pitiful state, Dutch chose to forgive her, and they returned to the base together. At this time, Citrakian asked Vasily to go to the factory with him. When they arrived, Vasily cut the fence, and just as they reached the entrance, they saw a school bus. Citrakian instantly understood where the feelers were coming from. The factory security noticed them, but before he could call for backup, Quinlan appeared and killed him. Inside the factory, they discovered a massive pit, which must be the breeding ground for feelers. They found several dead feelers on the ground, indicating that they didn't meet the standards of the Strigoi. Suddenly, they heard a roar from all around and found themselves surrounded by a horde of feelers. However, the feelers were too fast, and their attacks couldn't reach them. Just then, the feelers seemed to sense something terrifying and began to retreat. Citrakian realized that Quinlan had followed them and proceeded to eliminate all the feelers. Oh. 
Cetrakian looked at the man who resembled the master and was at a loss. Quinlan expressed his respect for Cetrakian, as he was the only one in the past hundred years who managed to severely injure the master and find his lair. Learning that the master was here, Cetrakian quickly asked Vasily to blow up the building while he followed Quinlan upstairs. While passing through a room, Cetrakian discovered the decaying body of the master's former vessel. By then, Vasily had finished installing the bomb. Quinlan found the master on the rooftop. And the master mocked Quinlan's lineage. Enraged, Quinlan charged towards the master. Suddenly, the building started shaking violently as the bomb installed by Vasily exploded. Massive rocks fell in front of the master, blocking Quinlan, who was unable to capture the master. Quinlan was very angry about this. It will definitely be more difficult to catch the blood ancestor in the future. As all of this was caused by Citrakian, Quinlan told him to stay out of it and let him handle the rest. Ikorst is applying makeup to Kelly, who has just been transformed into a vampire. This way, she could blend into the human world without drawing attention. With his makeover, Kelly started to resemble a human. Ikorst then gave Kelly the master's task of bringing Zack back as soon as possible. Kelly quickly arrived at Red Hook. It is heavily guarded, making it difficult for Strigoi to infiltrate because they need to be exposed to ultraviolet light. Just as Kelly was about to be exposed, a Strigoi suddenly emerged from a vehicle behind her. Taking advantage of the distraction, Kelly quickly entered Red Hook. She parked the car in the underground garage and released the feelers. On the other side, Injured F returned to the base and Nora quickly bandaged his wounds. F told her that Palmer had sent someone to kill his best friend, and he was determined to seek revenge. So, he found Vasily and asked where he could buy a sniper rifle because he wanted to kill Palmer. Soon, F arrived at a shipyard following the address. When he entered the house, a woman with a gun intercepted him. After learning F's identity as a doctor, the woman took him to her injured father. F immediately approached to examine his injuries and discovered that his abdomen had been pierced by a bullet. Since all the nearby hospitals were closed, F prepared to perform the surgery himself. Two hours later, F completed the surgery. To thank F for saving him, Jimmy Woo agreed to his request and gave him a sniper rifle. On the other side, based on the clues given by Quinlan, Citrakian arrived at a church where the Oxido Lumen was said to be in the possession of the bishop. They successfully met the bishop, who thought they didn't look like wealthy people. Well, the price is now $750,000 in gold. However, Citrakian knew the importance of the Oxido Lumen and agreed to his conditions, promising to pay the money within 24 hours. After they left, Vasily questioned Citrakian about where they would get so much money. Citrakian explained that they came today to confirm if the book was really there. If the book was in the bishop's hands, they could forcefully take it. Vasily laughed upon hearing this. On the other side, after witnessing the horrors of the Strigoi, Raya planned to convince her father to leave the restaurant. However, the restaurant was Narain's 26-year endeavor, and he was unable to let it go. But for the safety of their family, he eventually decided to leave. When Gus and Raya were packing things in the kitchen, they kissed each other. It was at that moment that Quinlan appeared and asked Gus to meet with him alone. We need to talk. He learned from the ancestor that Vaughn had trained a human warrior. He came to request Gus to join him in the fight against the master. After hearing this, Gus said that he no longer wanted to fight and kill, but just wanted to live an ordinary life. He then pulled out a gun and asked Quinlan to leave. It's okay, baby. It's okay, baby. After Gus calmed down, Quinlan released him and revealed that the master already knew that Gus was opposing him. So the master will attack the people Gus loves first, and then make Gus submit. Quinlan states that if Gus wants to protect the people he cares about, he should stay away from them until they kill the Strigoi, and only then can they truly be together. After hearing this, Gus decided to fight side by side with Quinlan to kill the blood ancestor for the sake of the woman he loved. Meanwhile, Eichhorst receives information and finds the bishop. Upon learning that so many people want the book, the bishop raises the price. In order to obtain the Oxido Lumen, Eichhorst turns the bishop into a Strigoi, so that the clues of the Oxido Lumen will be known by the Strigoi. This book contains the means to destroy the master and the patriarchs. At this time, Citrakian and Vasily arrive at the church and as soon as they walk in, they discover a body on the ground. By now, the bishop's body has been invaded by nematodes, and he will soon turn into a Strigoi. The whereabouts of the Oxido Lumen will also be known by the Strigoi. Just then, Vasily appears with a gun, but Eichhorst quickly dodges. Vasily throws a silver grenade at Eichhorst, and after the explosion, Eichhorst quickly escapes through the window. 
Then Citrakian begins to question the bishop about the whereabouts of the Oxido Lumen. He tells the bishop that if he turns into a Strigoi, the master will take the Oxido Lumen, and then all humans will become Strigoi. After hearing this, the bishop reveals a name, and Citrakian decapitates him. On the other side, Kelly uses the feelers to track down Zack's whereabouts. Kelly follows them all the way to the base of the vampire hunters. Zack is currently sitting inside the house, which has been reinforced by Vasily, making it impossible to force entry. Kelly knocks on the glass and calls for Zack to open the door. However, Zack refuses because he knows that Kelly has been infected by the Blood Clan, but Kelly lies to Zack, telling him that she has been cured and urges him to open the door quickly. Zack believes her and F seems to sense something. He saw Kelly standing in front of the window, and F quickly spoke up to stop Zack. He rushes downstairs but is still a step too late. Kelly successfully breaks in, but Nora appears just in time. Then, F grabs a knife and prepares to fight Kelly to the death. Nora also grabs a gun and starts looking for Kelly. At this moment, two feelers quietly enter the room and ambush Nora. After dealing with the feelers, <laughs> F continues to search for Kelly. Suddenly, Kelly descends from above, knocking F to the ground and throwing Nora aside. Oh, no! Stop! Kelly sees F preparing to grab a knife, so she extends her stinger to kill him. At this time Nora stood up and threw the iron hook towards Kelly. Zack realizes that he has been deceived. Just as F is about to kill Kelly, a feeler suddenly appears and blocks the bullets. <sighs> Kelly escapes again. At this moment, Kelly is very sad because she was only a few meters away from Zack. Eichhorst saw this and started comforting her. He told Kelly that failure is inevitable, but at least she found the hiding place of the vampire hunting team. Just now, the master told him a plan that has a high chance of rescuing Kelly's son, and then he asked Kelly to prepare. The next day, everyone gathered together to discuss what to do because the master now knows their location. If they stay here any longer, the master will definitely come and attack. After hearing this, Nora suggested going to Red Hook, where the security is tight and Justine leads a small army. Everyone agreed that it is the safest place. The vampires are killing humans everywhere in the city, and the government's inaction has made the situation uncontrollable. Fortunately, Justine has sealed off Red Hook, making it an infection-free zone. At this time, F found Justine and told her that a group of vampires disguised as normal people had infiltrated Red Hook yesterday. Although the vampires were driven away, they will launch another attack. Citrakian hopes that Justine can strengthen the defense because vampires will still try to infiltrate Red Hook. Justine didn't believe that any vampire could get past her layers of defense, so she drove F and others out. However, as F predicted, a group of vampires smuggled in from the sea. They were led by Eichhorst and Kelly. The boat owner started asking Eichhorst for money. Soon, the security guard heard a distress call on the walkie-talkie saying that the area was being attacked by a large number of creatures. Just as they finished speaking, there was no sound on the other end of the walkie-talkie, so the two security guards immediately got up and went to check. The staff in the power room also wanted to help, but just as they opened the door, Eichhorst led the vampires to the entrance. At this time, F and the others were outside and didn't know what to do. At that moment, the entire Red H Holocaust power and the surrounding area was plunged into darkness. It was only then that Lena realized something was wrong, and she quickly found F and the others. Citrakian said that this was definitely the work of the vampires, and without the protection of the ultraviolet lights, they would attack in full force. Upon hearing this, the mayor of Red Hook immediately ordered his men to prepare a car to escape from here. However, Justine was prepared to fight the vampires to the end and she then led all the police officers to the entrance. They vowed to protect the residents of Red Hook, lined up in a row, and started throwing flares outside to provide visibility. Sure enough, not long after, the vampires launched their attack. At Lena's command, everyone started firing at the vampires. With everyone's determined resistance, the attacking vampires were quickly cleared out. Citrakian warned everyone not to celebrate too soon, because this was just a test by the vampires, and they would soon launch a full-scale attack. Justine felt desperate after hearing this, as the police force in Red Hook was only a few dozen people, they would not be able to withstand a large-scale vampire attack. Now, 
The only option was to restore power to the ultraviolet lights, which would be able to stop the vampire army, due to the lack of defense at the main gate. The task of restoring power fell on the vampire hunting team. Just as they were about to get in the car and go to the power plant, Citrakian went straight to the base. Upon seeing this, F immediately followed and asked him what he was going to do. Citrakian said he was going to confront Eichhorst in a final battle because this was a rare opportunity. Seeing his determined attitude, F could only let him go. At this time, the sounds of vampire roars kept coming from outside Red Hook, sending chills down people's spines. Lena went to the elevated highway to check the situation outside. The scene in front of her instantly filled Justine with fear. Countless vampires were already outside, ready to attack, and they had no way to resist such a large number of vampires. In the distance, there are countless Strigoi gathering their strength. Justine collapsed after seeing this. She had promised to protect every resident of Red Hook, but now their police force is insufficient to resist these Strigoi. Upon seeing this, Sheriff Frank suggests that Justine go to Staten Island and leave the defense to them. However, Justine doesn't want to abandon her people. She would rather die here than escape alone. Seeing Justine's determined attitude, Frank suggests another solution. Soon, Justine arrives at the residential area and starts a speech, confessing the Strigoi attacks to everyone. She hopes that everyone can take up arms and fight against the Strigoi invasion together, protecting their homeland. On the other side, F and the others successfully enter the power plant. What catches their eyes are corpses lying all over the place. They continue to move forward when suddenly a group of Strigoi launches a surprise attack. The group can only hastily respond. Suddenly, a Strigoi sits up and stares at Zack. It turns out he was transmitting information to Kelly. F quickly kills him, but it doesn't stop the transmission. After obtaining Zack's location, Kelly prepares to go alone. Eichhorst goes to find Abraham for a duel. Nora finds a way to restore power plant in this book, seeing that they can handle it. F prepares to help Abraham fight against Eichhorst. The Strigoi launch a full-scale attack, with hundreds and thousands of them charging towards the Red Hook neighborhood. At Frank's command, everyone starts shooting frantically. The Strigoi at the forefront are killed one after another, but their numbers exceed the bullets. The Strigoi withstand the barrage from dozens of rifles and tear a large hole in the iron barricade. Realizing the situation is unfavorable, Frank immediately orders the team members to retreat to the next defensive line. Some slow running officers are knocked down by the Strigoi on the spot. Just when everyone is in despair, Justine leads all the residents and rushes out to protect their homeland. They pick up weapons and fight desperately against the Strigoi. However, these residents lack combat experience, and humans are still at a disadvantage. On the other side, following the instructions, Nora successfully restores the power in the power plant. At this moment, People feel deep despair as the Strigoi keep coming endlessly. After the power is restored, UV lights turn on one after another. The Strigoi exposed to the lights are instantly burned. In this battle, humans finally achieve the ultimate victory. While Vasily and Nora are celebrating, Zack discovers that Kelly has come. Kelly grabs a stick and starts hitting the glass. Vasily goes out and fires at Kelly, but unfortunately, only one shot hits. However, she manages to escape, leaving behind a pool of white blood. On the other side, Abraham finally confronts Eichhorst. Just as the two begin their duel, F, who is lying in ambush, suddenly fires a shot. This angers Eichhorst who pushes Abraham aside and goes straight for F. Seeing the unfavorable situation, F runs upstairs but eventually gets trapped on the rooftop. Just as Eichhorst is about to kill F, Abraham arrived in time and hit Eichhorst. Eichhorst, with bullets raining down on him, jumps off the building. The group enters someone's house, but suddenly a Strigoi launches a surprise attack. Abraham dodges it and then beheads him. Immediately after, another Strigoi emerges from the room, and Vasily shoots him in the head. All of their efforts were for a book called the Oxido Lumen, which contains methods to destroy Strigoi. Abraham found three households based on the names provided by the bishop. After verifying the information, it was clear that this was not the place they were looking for. On the other side, F was spying on Palmer from the building across. He was planning to assassinate Palmer to avenge his friend. At around 3 o'clock, Palmer was scheduled to have a press interview downstairs, so F started staking out on the rooftop in advance. Soon, Palmer appeared, and F immediately aimed his gun at him. However, there were too many people at the scene making it impossible to hit the target. Just as Palmer was about to enter the building, a journalist suddenly stopped him. This exposed Palmer completely under the muzzle. 
At this moment, F took a crucial shot. Then F looked through the scope again, confirming Palmer lying on the ground and the blood on the wall. Before quickly leaving the scene, Palmer was not hit by F. It was Marchand who was shot. Dutch and he just came down from upstairs. A plainclothes agent discovered the clues. Seeing this, F and Dutch immediately ran into an alley. The plainclothes agent were in hot pursuit of the two men. Suddenly, an iron gate appeared in front of him, and F successfully climbed over it. But when Dutch was climbing, the officer caught up and subdued her. F hesitated for a moment, then decided to turn and escape. However, at that moment, several police cars arrived from all directions, and F and Dutch were apprehended. On the other side, Vasily and the others followed the clues to a bookstore. There were tens of thousands of books displayed, but they couldn't find any clues about the Oxido Lumen. Just then, they heard the news of Palmer's assassination on the radio, mentioning that a man and a woman involved in the crime had been arrested. Upon hearing this, they felt uneasy. It must be F and Dutch. If the charges were confirmed, the two of them would likely face execution, so Vasily and Nora prepared to go and rescue them. On the other side, Palmer's private doctor was trying to save Marchand's life. Then he asked Eichhorst to find the blood ancestor to save Marchand, saying that if the blood ancestor did not come to save her, he would terminate his cooperation with the blood ancestor from now on. Eichhorst had no choice but to inform the blood ancestor. After a long wait, Marchand's surgery was completed. Although rescue efforts saved her life, it is still unclear whether she can be revived after the bullet hit her nervous system. Palmer fell into deep despair upon hearing this. Meanwhile, F and Dutch were locked up in the police station. Suddenly, a few police officers came and took Dutch away separately. F tried to intervene and immediately explained that she had nothing to do with it. The police officer hit F in response. At this moment, Abraham was still searching for the Oxido Lumen in the bookstore. Suddenly, a strikeaway appeared behind him. Fortunately, Abraham escaped the attack through the reflection of the mirror and then turned around and cut off the strigoi head directly. Immediately after, Abraham turned the severed strigoi head around and realized that it was not the person he was looking for. Now, only one place remains. Marchand was about to die, and suddenly a shadow flashed from behind. Palmer quickly got up to check, but found no one around. However, when he turned back, he saw the blood ancestor already by Marchand's bedside. The blood ancestor did not respond, but opened Marchand's mouth directly a milky white liquid dripped into her mouth. In an instant, her pale skin regained its color, and Marchand slowly opened her eyes. She was startled by the strange-looking man in front of her and quickly asked Palmer what had happened. Upon seeing this, Palmer began to confess to her that in order to achieve the goal of immortality, he had been cooperating with the blood ancestor. Marchand couldn't believe what she heard. On the other side, F has been kept in detention. Suddenly, strange noises came from outside, and in the next second, a group of strigoi stormed into the police station. The officers pulled out their guns in response, but the strigoi flooded in like a raging river. Under the fierce assault of the strigoi, the entire police station had begun to fall. Seeing the situation, the officers ran into F's cell and quickly locked the door. Just then, a strigoi leaped over. F quickly pulled the police officers to stand against the wall. Because this way the strigoi flesh thorns could not bite them. The officer then shot and killed the strigoi. But the gunshot attracted the attention of all the strigoi. All the strigoi rushed towards the prison cell and spat at the two of them. The officers started killing the strigoi one by one. But they soon ran out of bullets. Just as he was about to change the magazine, he was suddenly bitten on his arm by a flesh thorn. In F's despair, Vasily and Nora arrived in time. They carried out silverware and massacred wildly, and soon all the strigoi in the police station were slaughtered. It was only then that Vasily noticed Dutch was not there. F said she was taken away a few hours ago. Just then, a surviving officer walked in. He was dumbfounded at the sight of the strigoi corpses all over the place. The group then asked him about Dutch's whereabouts, and the frightened officer immediately revealed her location. She was taken to the Mayfield Hotel, five kilometers away. On the other side, Abraham found the address of the last house. He searched through every nook and cranny but found no clues, which caused Abraham to break down on the spot. He started slashing around with his sword, but then he noticed something strange about the sound of the floor beneath his feet. So he kicked aside the carpet and indeed found a hidden compartment. After opening it, he saw an object wrapped in cloth. Abraham uncovered the cloth and found a silver book. Upon opening the book, the words the Oxido Lumen were prominently written on it. It seemed to be the thing he had been searching for. 
Then Abraham continued to look through it. And sure enough, all the things recorded in it were about the Strigoi. Suddenly someone attacked him from behind. Obviously, that person was also after this book. In the hotel, Dutch was tightly bound by iron chains. Eichhorst is bringing her to the table little by little. Afterward, Eichhorst left the secret room. However, he soon returned, this time bringing a police officer with him. Right in front of Dutch, Eichhorst extended his fangs and directly bit the police officer. Seeing Dutch's terrified gaze, Eichhorst was quite satisfied. On the other side, Abraham woke up from unconsciousness and found himself tied to a chair. It turned out that the owner of the book, Rudyard, was the one who knocked him out. Abraham said he now wanted the book and asked Rudyard to name a price. But upon hearing this, Rudyard didn't want to make a deal with Abraham, stating that there were others interested in buying the book. So Rudyard prepared to auction it off, and the highest bidder would get it. After hearing this, Abraham advised him not to do it. If this book falls into Palmer's hands, humanity will face a catastrophic disaster. Ignoring Abraham's advice, Rudyard insisted on auctioning the book. Vasily and the others found the Mayfield Hotel based on the clues. Downstairs, they found a police car with its doors open. After searching, Nora found Dutch's hat in the back seat. Dutch suddenly noticed the spray on the policeman's body. In order to escape from Eichhorst, Dutch had to reach for it desperately. Just then, Eichhorst, who had finished resting, prepared to go back to the secret room. After opening the door, Dutch was sitting on the floor eating something, seemingly unaware of anything suspicious. But suddenly, Eichhorst ordered Dutch to take off his pants, leaving Dutch completely bewildered. Under Eichhorst's order, Dutch could only do it. Then, Eichhorst applied lipstick to Dutch's lips. Next, Eichhorst ordered Dutch to turn around, while he himself sat directly on the floor. At that moment, Dutch suddenly turned around and took out the spray she had hidden in advance, spraying it in his face. The burning sensation from the spray caused Eichhorst to fall to the ground and struggle in pain. Dutch took advantage of the situation to search his body and quickly unlocked the iron chains, but when she escaped from the secret room, she realized that all the exits in the hotel had been sealed off. The elevators had also stopped running. As Dutch continued to search for a way out, Eichhorst's voice came from ahead. In a panic, Dutch ran around, but luckily, she eventually found a safe passage. Meanwhile, Vasily and the others started going up the stairs. At this moment, Eichhorst chased after them, and Dutch stepped forward to fight him but was slapped down by Eichhorst. Then Eichhorst grabbed Dutch's legs and dragged her upstairs. On the other side, Vasily and others heard Dutch's cry for help. They immediately sped up and rushed upstairs, and soon came to the wall. Vasily took a steel rod and started smashing the wall but only managed to create a small hole. Later, Vasily took out a detonator and stuffed it in. F and the two immediately retreated upon seeing this. Vasily quickly ignited the detonator, and after a loud explosion, the wall collapsed. They immediately started running upstairs. At this time, Eichhorst was dragging Dutch back. When a silver hand grenade landed next to him, Dutch was successfully rescued in this way while Eichhorst managed to escape during the chaos. <laughs> Gus made a deal with Quinlan and he will continue to work for the ancestors, but the premise is that Raya and her family must be safely sent out of the city. Just after Gus sent Raya off, Angel turned back. The movies he made have always been about fighting vampires, and now he has to fight them in real life too. Angel successfully joined Quinlan's team. The next day, F and Nora found Councilwoman Justine and informed her that they had developed a serum that can kill the Strigoi. They needed a set of bioreactor equipment to mass-produce it and promised to hand it over to her once it was completed. Justine agreed to the plan and offered her assistance. F then asked Justine for three tickets and passes. He wanted to send Zack to his grandparents in Washington, and Justine agreed to his request. On the other side, Citrakian received information that Cream got hold of the Oxido Lumen, so he hurried over with Vasily. After meeting, Citrakian wanted to check the authenticity of the book first. Seeing this, Cream handed him the book, and when he opened it, 
It was indeed the same book he had seen before. Then Citrakian flipped through the Oxido Lumen, confirmed that it was genuine, and immediately Cream's men snatched the book away. Citrakian also followed the agreement and took out his watch to exchange for the book, but Cream refused him, saying that Palmer also wanted the book. Citrakian told him that he needed the book to end the spread of the virus. If this book falls into the hands of Palmer, this place will become a world of vampires. Cream didn't care and said he would give the book to whoever paid more money. Citrakian asked Cream for 24 hours, and he would offer a higher price than Palmer. Cream agreed and said that after 24 hours, he would auction off the Oxido Lumen here. And Citrakian just needed to have the money ready. In order to raise a large sum of money, Citrakian and the others found Quinlan. Although he is a vampire, they have a huge financial chain behind them. After meeting Quinlan, Citrakian told him that they needed the support of the vampire's funds to buy the Oxido Lumen. Quinlan said that money is not a problem, but how can he guarantee that after getting the Oxido Lumen, he will not use it to deal with the ancestors? Citrakian says that if this book falls into the hands of the blood ancestor, they will all die. Quinlan had no choice but to agree to Citrakian's request. Vampires are extremely afraid of sunlight, so they have specifically trained a human warrior to act during the day. Gus' first task is to find some followers to fight against the Strigoi. So he and Angel drove to the prison, since he used to be a street thug. He has many friends in prison. As soon as they entered the prison, a strong smell of blood hit them. There were dozens of resting Strigoi lying at the entrance, so the two of them had to proceed with caution. Just as they were approaching, Gus noticed movement in the prison cell ahead. When he got closer, he realized it was a prison guard. Gus immediately called out his name. The guard immediately asked for Gus's help because he had been locked up there for three days. Gus asked for his work card. Then Gus got the card and left directly. It turns out that this prison guard was famous for beating prisoners, and Gus was taken to the surveillance blind area and beaten up by him. They came to the control room after seeing the prisoners on the surveillance screen. Gus used the prison guard's work card to open the permissions. Riz, Riz, we're live. Are you silent? What the hell are you doing here? Did to get you out. Best idea I heard all day. Gus prepared a large number of weapons for everyone and told them to start working for Quinlan from now on. After hearing this, Perez asked what benefits they would get from working for Quinlan. Why we gotta take orders? Because he knows how to win against these things. He made us a deal. We work with him. We can own this city. I don't want us to have to fight on the way out. I don't want to lose anybody that we don't have to. Gus reminded them to be careful when they leave to avoid unnecessary losses. After briefing everyone, Gus led them to escape from the prison. When passing the prison guard, Gus released him anyway. As soon as the prison guard came out, he met Perez. When Perez was about to kill him, Gus stopped him. He said that shooting now would wake up the vampires. But Perez ignored the obstruction and shot the prison guard. Then another prisoner took a knife and started slashing at the prison guard crazily. This commotion woke up the sleeping Strigoi. The group had no choice but to fight and retreat. With the weapons, the Strigoi posed no threat to them. Soon, they escaped from the prison, and Gus told everyone to get in the car. Just then, Perez suddenly said he didn't want to work for Quinlan. After saying that, he pointed his gun at Gus. Thanks for the weapons, but... Anyone else? After completing the mission, Gus reported the situation to Quinlan. Quinlan was very satisfied after hearing this, so he asked Gus to track Citrakian. He tells Gus that Citrakian will get a book, and Gus's mission is to make Citrakian give up the book. Gus asks him what if Citrakian doesn't give up the book, and Quinlan tells him to kill him and take the book. On the other hand, Eichhorst arrived at the Stoneheart group. He came to bid on the Oxido Lumen on behalf of Palmer. Palmer was angry after hearing this. To obtain immortality, Palmer had no choice but to agree to Eichhorst's demands. She told him that he could not continue to be controlled by Eichhorst and that he needed to make them understand his importance. Seeing Coco, who was always thinking about him, Palmer felt a little more comfortable. In a factory on the outskirts, Eichhorst directed the workers in the renovation. They thought they were installing equipment for slaughtering animals. But in reality, its true purpose was to slaughter humans. These workers were deceived by Eichhorst, unaware that they were creating a slaughterhouse for themselves. On the other side, F packed his luggage to prepare to send Zack to Washington, while Citrakian was going to attend the auction for the Oxido Lumen that night. Before that, Vasily reinforced the truck to prevent a major battle from happening later. Soon, F arrived at the high-speed rail station with Zack, surrounded by people who wanted to escape the city. This train was the last one, and after that, 
the city would be completely sealed off. F and the others waited for the high-speed train, which was seen by Kelly, she saw Zack about to be taken away. Igniting her anger, Gus gathered the people he had brought out of prison and began to introduce Quinlan to them, when Quinlan took off his hat, the prisoners started to discuss among themselves. At this moment, an ignorant prisoner questioned Quinlan's identity and then pulled out a gun to threaten him. Quinlan's handling of the matter made no one dare to resist. Are you with me? Then let us fight. On the other hand, the auction for the Oxido Lumen is approaching, and Citrakian and the other person entered the venue early. Before that, all their weapons were confiscated. Then, Cream asked Citrakian to provide his account information for asset verification. At that moment, Eichhorst also arrived at the auction site. After the routine body search, Eichhorst also handed over his account for verification. Soon, the asset verification of the two individuals was completed. And now they started bidding for the Oxido Lumen. Citrakian was the first to bid. The bidding of the two shocked Cream, seeing that both of them were willing to do whatever it takes to obtain the book. Cream made a suggestion. He proposed that whoever has a higher limit on their bank account will own the book. Both of them agreed to this method. And their subordinates began to check their accounts. When they heard that Citrakian's account had 323 million US dollars, Vasily laughed. But when it was Eichhorst's turn, his bank account limit was higher than Citrakian's. Eichhorst won the victory, and then Cream handed the book to Eichhorst. After seeing the book, Eichhorst took a step back. He expressed that he hoped that Cream would put the book in a canvas bag before giving it to him, because vampires cannot touch silver objects. At that moment, something unexpected happened. Eichhorst's bank account was suddenly cancelled. In the end, the book belonged to Citrakian, which made Eichhorst furious. Faced with countless guns pointed at his head, Eichhorst could only leave. Afterward, Citrakian prepared to leave with the book. At that moment, a truck crashed into him, followed by a large number of vampires rushing towards him. It seems that Eichhorst wanted to snatch the book. Here we go. Vasily quickly started the truck again, while Citrakian held a gun to confront the approaching vampires. Fortunately, the vehicle quickly started, but when Vasily was about to escape, another truck appeared in front, blocking his way. In desperation, the two of them could only hide in the reinforced cargo box of the truck. Just then, Eichhorst's voice came. As always, your victory was fleeting. Bring me the book and the professor. A large group of vampires surged like a flood, launching a full-scale attack on the truck in front of them. Eichhorst was willing to do anything to obtain the Oxido Lumen. Luckily, Vasily had modified the truck in advance, temporarily resisting the vampire's attack. Vasily opened a gap on the side of the truck with a submachine gun, followed by a frenzy of shooting at the vampires. At that moment, several cars quickly approached and it was Gus and the others, they directly fired at the vampire horde. Seeing this, Eichhorst immediately sneaked in to seize the Oxido Lumen. When he opened the door, he felt a terrifying sense of fear. Turning around, he found that Quinlan had already appeared by his side. Then the blood ancestor took control of Eichhorst's body. You were wise not to come here tonight. I fear no one. Eichhorst ran away again. Quinlan couldn't catch up with him even if he teleported. At this moment, a fierce battle was still taking place ahead. After they fired with silver bullets, there were not many vampires left. Gus took the opportunity to quietly approach the truck. After entering, Gus found that they were nowhere to be found. At that moment, he noticed a hidden door ahead. It turns out they had already escaped through the sewer. Just then, Gus heard a ticking sound in his ear. On the other side, F and the others had boarded the train bound for Washington, but just before departure, the conductor realized that there were many people standing in front of him. He immediately pulled off the emergency stop. It turned out that these were vampires controlled by Kelly. Countless vampires formed a human wall to block the train. Soon, 
The train derailed and slowly came to a stop in a tunnel. Nora quickly took Zack and ran out of the train. Meanwhile, F and the others were blocked by feelers on their way. As the feelers were about to charge at them, F managed to find a handgun in the last moment. F then started chasing after Zack. But halfway through, he was intercepted by two feelers. F had no choice but to eliminate them first. At that moment, Nora and the others encountered Kelly in the tunnel. Nora instructed Zack to find an opportunity to run to the station. The battle between Nora and Kelly was about to commence. Nora's attacks were all dodged by Kelly. So Nora pulled out her silver sword to fight against her. Then Nora asked Zack to take the opportunity to leave quickly, but Zack stopped halfway. He looked at his injured mother with great concern. When Nora was about to kill Kelly, Zack asked her to stop. Distracted by Zack's repeated requests, Nora was caught off guard, and Kelly took the opportunity to spit out a stinger and bit Nora's arm. Because of Zack's constant requests, Kelly let go of Nora, but she was still infected. Kelly then approached Zack, who jumped into her arms upon seeing his mother. Shortly after, Zack left with Kelly, After some time, F found his way there and learned that Zack had been taken away, which made him furious. Then F discovered that Nora's body was already filled with nematodes, which made F collapse even more. You're always late. I can figure something out. While gripping into mine, I, I don't want him to hear your words, to see you through my eyes.